Do you want to make custom skins in Pavlov? Yes. Are you dumb and don't know how to make them? He's right. Are you tired of mindlessly rigging skins? That's me. Well, I'm going to show you the best way to make skins in Pavlov. Starting off, I'm assuming you actually know a thing or two about Blender and Unreal Engine, and you aren't a complete idiot. If not, well, maybe go watch some other tutorials before this one. First, make sure that you have Blender 3.6 downloaded. Trust me, don't argue, just get it. You'll see why later. As always, delete the default cube, and then import your custom character. What? Where the hell is it? Oh! Oh my god, we need to fix that. For size reference, go back to Unreal and in your content folder look up the UE5 mannequin and then download the one that looks like the Pavlov character. Now import it into Blender and resize your character to match the Unreal one. Once your character is all snug, apply all transforms. My dumbass skipped this, but you shouldn't. Now you can delete the Unreal character. Alright, let's set up the material and make your character sexy and- Oh, what the fuck? Okay, we cannot have multiple material slots because it'll turn Pavlov into a fucking PowerPoint. Let's fix it. If your model is actually good and only has one material slot, congratulations, you can skip to this time code on the screen. For the rest of us, set the base color to image texture on all of the materials and upload the textures. Now, make a new UV map and name it to whatever. And this is very important that you click this thing here, or else it won't work at all and Blender will spite you. Silently. Now go to edit mode, select all the vertices and press U. Choose smart UV projects because we're smart people doing smart things. I'm gonna stretch the UV to fit the whole square, but you probably won't have this problem. It's something weird with my mesh. Next, go to the shading tab and select your first material. Drag off the image texture and add UV. Okay, real quick, these nodes are connected. My GPU just decided to gaslight me and not show me it unless I zoom in super far. Set the UV for the original texture as the original UV. And now, add a new image texture, set it as a high resolution, and untick alpha. Don't connect it to anything. Now drag off of it and add another UV and set that one to our new UV. Copy and paste these three nodes for all of the materials and connect the first UV to the first texture each time. I know, it's annoying, we're almost done, just bear with me. Now go back through each material and select our new image texture. Now switch to the render tab and set the engine to cycles and your device to GPU compute. If you keep it on CPU, well, go walk the dog, you're going to be baking for like 12 hours. Scroll down and click the bake drop down. Set the type to diffuse and uncheck the direct and indirect so we aren't baking the shadows. Fuck shadows. Wait no, don't fuck the shadows. Set the margin to 2000 so that there are no black seams in our texture. And now we're finished. All that we have left to do is take a deep breath and take it. And now we wait. Voila, look at that. It's perfect. Let's slap this bad boy on our model. What? Why are you giving me that look? Oh, you thought we were done now? <laughs> bat, 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 bat. We are not done. First of all, click the image option here and save it. Now we can delete that nasty old UV and those redundant texture slots. Now just add one texture and apply the fresh out of the oven image. Our guy is looking awfully shiny, let's down the reference. Oh wait, fuck no, turn it back up, all the way up. Jesus, let's not douse our character in lube. Okay, we've made it through the texture baking. Welcome back to all of our friends that were lucky enough to skip this part as well. Let's get to rigging our mesh. I'm going to give you guys a little present here. Click the link in the description and download this plugin that totally isn't usually $50 to buy and totally isn't completely free with that link. Don't ask questions. Now, go into your plugin section. What? Where is it? I, I could have sworn it was right here. Okay, now look up Auto Rig Pro and enable it. 
To get to it, open up this little sidebar and click the tab called ARP, which stands for Asshole Reversal Procedure. It's not FDA approved. Now under the Auto Rig Pro Smart drop down, with your mesh selected, click the Get Selected Objects. Now click this button to add each of your joints. Once you finish, click Go. Alright, now I've got an accurate skeleton. Well, kind of. Fix what you need to fix in edit mode. Alright, now it looks good. Now, oh god, where are the thumbs? Okay, now go back to object mode and select the skeleton and click match to rig. Now go back to object mode again and select the mesh and then the rig in that order. And then switch to the skin tab and click- Wait, hold on, before you click that, uh, go here and click voxelized. I forgot to tell you this when I recorded the video, but, uh, do that, it'll, like, save you hours of white painting. Click fine. Now, if we go to pose mode, we can move our guy around. Oh, oh, let's, um, ignore that. Congratulations, you finished rigging your character. Time to export it and put it into Unreal Engine. Click the export drop down and select export FBX. In this window, go over here and select Unreal Engine and then Humanoid. Now scroll down and check these three boxes. Don't ask what they do, just trust the process. Great, give it a name and export it to the desired folder. Now open up Unreal Engine and upload your glorious creation to your UGC. First, let's give our guy some LOD so he isn't lagging the game. Open up the skeleton mesh and under the LOD section, set it to have as many LODs as you like. You could go full with 8 yeah. LODs or pretend you weren't dropped as a baby and keep it at 2. Now set the LOD distance to however far you would like as well. Okay, it's time to add our skin to the list. There are two ways of doing this. One is for adding our skin to a map, and the other is adding our skin to a standalone content mod. First, I'll show you the first way. If you're making a content mod, skip to the timecode on the screen. In your content browser, right click and search for the data table. Set your table to player skin. Go ahead and name it and then open it up. To add a skin, press this add button and set the player mesh to your skin's skeletal mesh. And then set the hand model to whatever you like. Now's the important part, rename this row to what you want your skin's ID to be. This is your skin's sacred name, choose wisely. Open up your map's global info, and if you don't have a custom one, create one. If you're scared of global infos, it's best to leave now. Set the player's skin table to the table you just created. And boom, you're done. Now here's the way for people making content mods. First, go to the Pavlov Workshop tab, and then go to your Source Mod section. Look up Dark Ats Source Mod and download it. Find the UGC and open it up. Select these three things, and don't copy. Click Advanced Copy, and copy it to your UGC. Now, go to your UGC and open up the Mod Initialize. Under the Components, click Add to List Component. And then under the Details panel, click the plus button next to the Skins. Set the Skins ID, and then set your Skeletal Mesh. Holy shit, you finally finished. You rigged it, you textured it, you exported it, you suffered through Blunder's 17 mood swings and Unreal Engine's period cramps, and now all you've got left to do is test it out. Ugh. <sighs>